Welcome to TCC. 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 Grab some food and some drink for communion later in the service. We're so glad you've joined us for our online worship. Church Disciples of Christ. We are delighted that you are worshiping with us on this beautiful Christmas morning. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king, peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with angelic host proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. We have a few announcements now. The church office will be closed this upcoming week. There will be no Zoom meetings. Next Sunday, there will be one worship service. It will be at 1030, but there will be no youth activities that day. And check the volunteer sign up in the January newsletter and also in the weekly newsletter. Welcome to worship. Please join me in prayer. Lord, today is such a day of great joy. At a time when every heart should be happy and light, Many of us are struggling. We ask your special blessing and healing for those who are confused, whose bodies are tired, those who are grieving, those who are ill. We ask your blessing on those who are hungry, homeless, lonely, and those, Lord, that only you we lift up those who are named today and those who are named in our hearts. Let them know that you are not only with them, but are holding them in your arms. Show us again the beauty of that holy night so many centuries ago. Remind us that you are the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father and the Prince of Peace. Help us make the good news of great joy a reality in our lives. Lord, you are our joy and our peace. No longer a baby in a manger, you are the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We celebrate you this Christmas and all we continue our prayer, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. 
deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from Luke 2. days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. The first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look! I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Second reading, Isaiah 9, 2 through 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch dark land, light has dawned. You have made the nation great. You have increased its joy. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. As on the day of Midian, you've shattered the yoke that burdened them, the staff on their shoulders and the rod of their oppressor. Because every boot of the thundering warriors and every garment rolled in blood will be burned, fuel for the fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast 
authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. Well, that's not how it was supposed to go. I think we're all probably getting tired of saying those words, and yet here I am recording at home because this year for Christmas, I've gotten COVID. I'm feeling mostly okay, but all of the plans that I had been making for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day service are now called into question, at least my part in those plans, because... We don't always know what's going to happen next. And so I'm at home recording and trying to make sure that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day in-person worship services will still be able to go ahead. Because I might still be testing positive, I might not. I was not expecting this year to be trying to rewrite the lyrics to Christmas carols and throwing in whining about having COVID like I'm getting COVID for Christmas. I wish I'd put on a mask or something like that. I wasn't planning on having to do all this. I was planning on finally, finally having a Christmas season that was not interrupted by a pandemic. But here we are. This kind of thing seems to happen. And no matter how much we wish we had control over things, we don't. And maybe, just maybe, two and a half years, almost three years, that's not right. Yes, it is. Almost three years. It's hard to believe. Almost three years into this whole thing. I'm still learning the lesson. I think we're probably all still trying to learn the lesson that things aren't going to go the way we plan. This is something we were all probably trying to learn in some ways even before the pandemic, but it was kind of on the back burner most of the time. Throughout the pandemic, it has been more front and center for me. How do I deal with things when they don't go according to plan? And during this Christmas season, when I think we were all excited that things were at least somewhat more normal. We knew COVID was still out there. We knew the flu was making a strong comeback as well as RSV, but we really felt like this was going to be the one. This past Sunday at TCC, we had an absolutely fantastic Christmas program. We had a spectacular talent show and a magnificent choral cantata followed by a Christmas reception. And I remember thinking to myself, this is the way it's supposed to feel. I was looking forward to a Christmas Eve service, two Christmas Eve services that would feel like they were supposed to feel. And then Christmas morning, waking up, opening presents, and then heading over to church for a nice, casual worship service. It all seemed to be working together, and it still might. I'm doing better than I was this summer when I had COVID. But it's definitely not what I had planned. So what do we do now? We remember. We remember that not the way we had it planned is actually how the first Christmas went. I've seen some pretty good joke drawings out there, some cartoons about Joseph and Mary arriving in Bethlehem and finding no room in the inn, and Mary grumbling under her breath, why didn't you make a reservation? And Joseph saying, I am so sorry, Mary. I had no idea it was going to be this busy. Please, will you ever forgive me? And thus began the first silent night because Mary was no longer speaking to Joseph. It's a humorous look at what was certainly the kind of night that didn't go the way that it was planned. In the Christmas cantata, I actually laughed because I got to play the role of Joseph or at least read the role of Joseph a young man who was frustrated because travel plans were sprung upon him. He had to go to Bethlehem. And I've got to be honest, when travel plans are sprung on me or 
when travel plans don't go the way I think they should, my anxiety shoots up. And that's exactly what the role called for. And I can only imagine Joseph upon arriving in Bethlehem and seeing how full the streets were, was starting to feel that anxiety at a level that maybe I've never even experienced. The story from Luke chapter 2 probably does not do justice to the full range of human emotions that were felt that first Christmas night. And as we listen to the story, so many parts are familiar. But it is that familiarity that maybe holds us back. Holds us back from seeing not just what happened that night, but seeing the ways in which God moves in the world. That Christmas is not a story about the God who puts all of the chess pieces in the right place and makes sure things are just so. Instead, God is a God whose love moves in spite of. And when we open our hearts with wonder, we can start to see the ways in which God works in the world. So I want to read you a story that is the Christmas story, but also not. This is called The Birth. It's a poem by Wendell Berry that is set in Kentucky in modern times. I'll read you this poem because maybe it opens us to see things just a little differently. They were into the lambing up late, talking and smoking around their lantern. They squatted in the barn door, left open so the quiet of the winter night diminished what they said. The chill had begun to sink into their clothes. Now and then they raised their hands to breathe on them. The youngest one yawned and shivered. Darn, he said, I'd like to be asleep. I'd like to be curled up in a warm nest like an old groundhog and sleep till spring. When I was your age, Billy, it wasn't sleep I thought about, Uncle Stanley said. Last few years here, I've took to sleeping. And Raymond said, to sleep till spring, you'd have to have a trust in things the way animals do. Been a long time, I reckon, since people felt safe enough to sleep more than a night. You might wake up someplace you didn't go to sleep at all. They hushed a while, as if to let the dark brood on what they had said. Behind them, a sheep stirred in the bedding and coughed. It was getting close to midnight. Later, they would move back along the row of pinned ewes, making sure the newborn lambs were well dried and had sucked, and they would go home cold to bed. The barn stood between the ridge top and the woods along their bluff. Below was the valley floor and the river they could not see. They could hear the wind dragging its underside through the bare branches of the woods. And suddenly, the wind began to carry a low singing. They looked across the lantern at each other's eyes and saw they had all heard. They stood their huge shadows rising up around them. The night had changed. They were already on their way, dry leaves underfoot and mud under leaves, to another barn on down along the wood's edge, an old stripping room where by the light of the open stove door they saw the man and then the woman and the child lying on a bed of straw on the dirt floor. Well, look a there, the old man said. First time this ever happened here. And Billy, looking and looking away, said, Howdy, howdy, bad night. And Raymond said, There's a first time, they say, for everything. And that, he thought, was as reassuring as anything was likely to be, and as he needed it to be. They did what they could, not much. They brought a piece of rug and some sacks to ease the hard bed a little, and one wedged three dollar bills into a crack in the wall in noticeable places. And they stayed on looking, looking away, until finally the man said they were well enough off and should be left alone. They went back to their sheep. For a while long, they squatted in their lantern and talked, tired, wanting sleep yet stirred by wonder. Old Stanley, too, though he would not say so. 
Don't make no difference, he said. They'll have him anywhere. Looks like a man would have a right to be born in bed if not die there, but he don't. But you heard that singing in the wind, Billy said. What about that? Ghosts, they do that way. Not that way. Scared him, it did, the old man laughed. We'll have to hold his hand for him and lead him home. It didn't bother you, Billy said. You go right on just the same. But you heard. Now that I'm old, I sleep in the dark. That ain't what I used to do in it. I heard something. You heard a good deal more than you'll understand, Raymond said. Or him. Or me either. They looked at him. He had, they knew, a talent for unreasonable belief. He could believe in tomorrow before it became today. A human enough failing. And they were tolerant. He said, It's the old ground trying again. Solstice. Seeding. And birth. It never gets enough. It wants the birth of a man to bring together sky and earth like a stalk of corn. It's not death that makes the dead rise out of the ground, but something alive, straining up, rooted in darkness like a vine. That's what you heard. If you're in your right mind when it happens, it can come on you strong, and you might hear music passing on the wind, or see a light where there wasn't one before. Well, how do you know it amounts to anything? You don't. It usually don't. It would take a long, long time to ever know. But that night, and other nights afterwards, up late, there was a feeling in them, familiar to them, but always startling in its strength, like the thought on a winter night of the lambing ewes, dry-bedded and fed, and the thought of the wild creatures warm, asleep in their nests, deep underground. I hope that this poem opens for you that wonder, that sense of unreasonable belief that can make tomorrow become today, that can bring the promises of God that we hear in the prophet Isaiah to fulfillment. Unreasonable belief and wonder can lead us out and in to the kingdom of God. The night, whether it's described by Wendell Berry as happening in Kentucky or happening in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, that night, it was a night of wonder. It was a night that did not make sense. It was a night that did not go the way it was supposed to go. But God still worked. The light still shone. The wind and the angels still sung their songs. And hope came down at Christmas. Peace settled upon the earth. Joy filled the hearts of those who witnessed it. And love became flesh and walked among us. Amen. Merry Christmas and welcome to this communion table. What a wonderful time to come to the table on a day when we celebrate the birth of our Savior. Our Savior who spent 33 years teaching the way of the, of the Lord, who was sacrificed on the cross so that we may receive eternal life in heaven. Let the joy of this season provide hope that more people will learn of his broken body represented by this bread and his spilled blood represented by this cup, that we are forgiven of our sins, open our hearts so we will share the love of Jesus Christ to those who are lost and unaware. Let us pray. Lord, we are so thankful that you sent your son to be the light. Help us to maintain our faith in all that we do. Help us to love one another the way you love us. We thank you for this most wonderful gift of the year, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night Jesus was portrayed, 
he gathered with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it, saying, do this in remembrance of me. Also, he took a cup representing his spilled blood and said, do this in remembrance of me. It is the season of giving, the season where we give to our loved ones and to where we give to strangers. As we give, remember that we plant seeds in that ground that Wendell Berry talked about, that those seeds planted in the ground will grow. If they are nourished, they will bear fruit, far more fruit than what we planted, because that is how it works with God. When we take the seeds we have been given and we plant them by giving what we can, we will see the fruit of the kingdom of God multiply again and again, making this world the world of hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. And now receive a benediction. God is with you. Emmanuel, God is with you. Receive the light of God and go and shine that light of hope, peace, joy, and love, the light of Christ, everywhere you go. Amen. Let's get out there and give them heaven. <laughs>